What's up YouTube, TGG Battle Slash Dragons here today with another deck profile. Uh, today my friend John's going to be showing us his uh, uh, Win Witch Dark Magician deck. So, right. so to start off we play three Dark Magicians. Uh, can't play a deck without three. Two Magician of Dark Illusion. Uh, some people like three. I like a two-three ratio with the Dark Magician and Illusion. And, um, illusion. Simply because I also play the Wind Witch um, engine in the deck, and it kind of contradicts at times. Um, triple Rod. If you're playing any Dark Magician variant, uh, you need to play Triple Rod. It pretty much gives you access to all of the cards. That's enough for the Dark Magician cards. Uh, for the Wind Witches, we play Double Glass Bow. This is the Searcher on Normal Summon. Double, uh, triple ice bow. This starts, uh, she's the one that starts a combo from your hand. And one snow bow. This is the one that prevents uh, your crystal wing from being destroyed by card effects while on the field. Uh, personal tech, I play one knights and sorcerer. I use this in tangent with dark magician to summon azure eyes. I'll get over, which I'll go over when I go to the extra deck. It pretty much just creates a lock where they can't get rid of crystal wing by most um, inherent means. And the last monster we play is the one Maxi, because it's at one, and it's still a good card to have, because it, it, it pressures your opponent. I think that's, I want to say, 17 monsters. That could be wrong, could be 16. For the spells, we play Triple Dark Magic Circle. Uh, for those of you who don't know, on activation, you look at the top three cards of your deck, and add any Dark Magician or Dark Magician related spell or prop card from your deck, from those three to your hand. Whenever a Dark Magician monster is normal or a special summon to your side of the field, you can banish any card from your opponent's side of the field. The effect is a target, however, so just be aware. But this pretty much is what makes the deck. It lets, you can pretty much cancel your opponent's plays uh, before they make them. One uh, for our Dark Magician related spell cards, other than Circle, we play one Dark Magic Inheritance, one Illusion Magic, and one Dark Magic Attack. These are pretty much the standard three. Some people like to play two Illusion Magics. I chose to just play one because I feel like two clogs. Although two, it, even though it clogs, it isn't a clog that makes it dead. It's more of a clog like this could be a better card. Uh, Dark Magic Attack simply because you have access to a Heavy Storm for Dark Magician, so you might as well play it. And Dark Magic Inheritance because top decking this card later in the game pretty much is another rod without wasting a normal summon. So it always is an amazing card to draw into. For draw power, for the draw power engine of the spell cards, we play two other darknesses because with the exception of the Wind Witches and the Maxi, you're playing nothing but darks and two Wonder Wands. Uh, Wonder Wands simply because you play nothing but spellcasters and summon Maxi, and hopefully you never get to a situation where you have to summon Maxi. Um, some people like to play triple Wonder Wand or like triple Pod Dual or Pod Duality included in this. I chose not to because Pod Duality tends to, if you draw into one which is plus Pod Duality, you have to choose between which one you want to go into, the Crystal Wing or the, or the Pot. Since Pot limits your plays, it's safer to just play this uh, engine like this, in my opinion. Um, for staple spells, we play one Raigeki and one Soul Charge. Soul Charge because it can extend your plays with one Witch combos and Raigeki because it's Raigeki. And for another tech of mine, we play two Mass Chains 2, utilizing the Mass Hero Wind and Dark types. For Trap Cards, we play Double Navigation and Triple Eternal Song. Some people play Triple Navigation. I found more comfortability with it. Double and Triple Eternal Soul because the requirement for this to have a Dark Mission in your hand Tends to, tends to make you do plays that would be safer with just an internal soul. Because I used to play three and two. If I found that I had more Dark Magicians in my graveyard than I did in my hand in most times of the game. So this was a safer bet. Although this is still a great card because it's a great fodder for Mash Chains. Next we play one Charlotte Road. 
So that road, um, unknown to most people, negates the effect of Eternal Soul when it activates to pop your field, and you have two armor monsters on the field. It also great fodder. It is also great against uh, enemy Raigekis or Dark Holes, as well as Twin Twisters. Next, we play Double Lost Wind, one of the best trap cards in my opinion in this format, simply because once used, it comes back, and the negate and cut in half of the attack points that it does is permanent, and it helps you get over cards that you won't normally be able to get over. And finally, we play one Solemn Strike and one Solemn Warning. Um, I decided to go one and one, simply because whenever I were to Soul Charge, I would normally pay 4,000 life points, because it just makes sense because I normally end up with like my crystal wing combo plus a level 7 and a level 8 another level 8 or synchro and another level 7 synchro and I would only have an extra 4,000 life points to pay so in a, in a long distance game where like all your cards are being used you wouldn't get to resolve two solemn strikes you probably wouldn't even get to resolve both of these it's just safer because hey I have, I have 4,000 life points left, I can resolve 3,500 life points of um, payment. Um, that's the main deck, it is 40 cards. For the extra deck, for the, we play 5 fusions, we play 1 Mascara Anki, 1 Mascara Divine Wind, Double Dark Law, and 1 Mascara Blast. Uh, for those who don't know the effects, Anki and Divine Wind are level 8, these are level 6's. When Anki destroys a monster by battle, you can add another change, uh, uh, change card from your deck to your hand. So basically, the second mass change, he can also steal games because he can attack your opponent directly, although the damage he inflicts is half. <coughs> Excuse me. Divine Wind cannot be destroyed by battle, so it's great to sit on. And whenever it does destroy a monster by battle, you get to draw a card. Although you have to send the monster to the grave when it's destroyed. Dark Law, for those of you who don't know, even though you probably should, um, it's a macro cosmos for your opponent's side of the field, and whenever they add a card from their deck to their hand once per turn, you get to banish a random card from their hand. Mass Kiro Blast is one of the newer ones. On summon, it cuts the attack points of one of your opponent's monsters by half, I believe, for the turn. No, it's permanent, actually. Um, its other effect is the more useful one. Once per turn, during either player's turn, you can pay 500 life points to return any spell or trap card your opponent has to their hand. So, if in a game where like it's going on for a while and you're in top decking mode, both you and your opponent, you can actually sit on this because if they're top decking spell or trap cards, you can summon this and just bounce back wherever they top deck, making your play safer. So those are the fusions. We play five synchros, one is Eyes because of Knights and Sorcerer, and people who don't really know that it can summon any normal monster, Azurai doesn't only summon blue eyes monsters, it summons any normal monster from your graveyard during the standby phase. So, on top of protecting your dragon type synchros or your dragon, any dragon type monster you summon, it also can protect, um, it also can summon Dark Magician for plays. The want Crystal Wing because of the Wind Witches, Sardis Dragon because Sardis Road, Clear Wing, another option for the Wind Witches, and the Wind Witch Ice um, Winter Bell because I actually found use in its second effect that lets it target itself or any other win which is summoning a monster from your hand because you can target itself and summon Dark Magic from your hand. And that will also trigger your Dark Magic Circle. And it's during either player's battle phase, so it's a great card. And finally for the XCs, we play one Red Eyes Metal Flare, one Big Eye, one Ebon, one Titanic Maw, and one Ebon High. Eb the Ebon's obvious because Dark Magician support, uh, big Eye because the best, it's one of the best level sevens. Red Eyes because it still game, it steals games, and this because it also steals games because if they max you, you can keep spe making them keep um, special summoning monsters. They'll keep drawing cards, and by attacking with this and dealing damage, detaching for its effect, you'll deal 500 points for every card in their hand, and it can steal games easily. Um, lastly, the side deck. I'll, I play two uh, Kaiju Raiden. Um, I played this over the generic Sea Turtle because it's a dark target and it's a target for a lot of darkness. Also, it's a level 7. So, level 7, rank 7 plays. Pretty much a no brainer. Uh, I play Artifact Lancia for the mirror match. 
So stopping opponents from mashing cards, mirror max, um, decks that like to banish infernoids, um, the grass is greener decks. Uh, I attack in Kaiko. Um, basically, if I were to side this in, it would probably be in place of Knights and Sorcerer because it's safer against Grass's Greener decks because they won't be able to advantage cards from their graveyard. Or even from graveyard. It's also going to counter for like Cosmos, Monarchs, any deck that likes to banish cards from their graveyard. Uh, two retaliating Cs, this is for the uh, DDD matchup. So when they use their smart cards to summon their big, their big guys, you can just use this and they'll, everything will get banished for them. And if they get rid of this card, and, since, and if, if it's summoned by this effect, I believe by this effect, if summoned this way, yeah, it's a macro for their field, so it's another Dark Law. And if it's sent to the graveyard while on the field, you can pretty much add maxi from your deck to your hand. So you can combo with Wind Witches by normal summoning it, then Wind Witch comboing, and you'll pretty much get a free maxi. Uh, next we play one Eye of Tamias and one Dark Paladin. Um, we play them together for obvious reasons. This lets you summon Dark Paladin. This is great for um, Blue Eyes, any Dragon deck actually. It's pretty good side against, simply because if I have to attack for every Dragon in the graveyard and on field, and by discarding card, it can negate spell cards, so it can pretty much negate decks that like to like that need the spell cards to go off. So blue eyes, red eyes, just inherent dragon decks. It's just a good tech card to have. Um, double twin twister. Uh, back for heavy decks. Uh, another tech of mine, legacy of the duelist. Legacy of the duelist. One of the newer cards that comes out. People don't really know its effects, so I'll read it off. The first effect is. You can negate one of your monsters' attacks, and as the as cost, and it will let you pop a uh, spell shock off your opponent's back row. Um, your attack gets negated for that, so it's a pretty good card. Just like if your attack points are lower than your opponents, just attack with something weak, pop a card, attack with something big, make it safer. They cannot change Quaking Mirror Force because of this, because they miss timing to activate it. So you act, will attack this, this is active because you're a turn player. They have no time window to activate Quaking Mirror Force or any Mirror Force cards or anything in battle phase. So Max Cylinder, Quaking, Scrap Iron, Scarecrow, etc. The other effect is monsters cannot attack during the time they are summoned from the extra deck. And the final effect is during your draw phase, you can skip your draw as cost I mean, I to add any monster from your deck from your graveyard to your hand. So it lets you recycle your cards and continue locking your opponent. I know what I'm doing. Another tech from the new set, Magician Left Hand, pretty much for uh, Trap Heavy decks, Card Demise, um, Paleozoics. It's a continuous spell card. Basically, while it's on the field, while you control Spellcaster, the first trap card your opponent uses gets negated by default. Um, pretty good card, you just activate it. Uh, summon this, but you can summon Rod, activate this. Next trap card they use gets negated. It makes them, makes them waste the card. And it's, this is great to have. Uh, finally, for traps, play two Quaking Mirror Forces. Uh, this is for decks that like are immune to being targeted and lost when we work on. So like decks that like you know those cards like Maxi, um, Leo, um, just any decks that targeting is an issue for them. Quaking works great, simply because it doesn't target. And once you're face down, they can be banished by your mags, by by your card effects. And the last card which I have to get new sleeve for is Imperial Order. Fresh off the ban list, it does seem odd to play this card simply because if you play at the wrong time, it can stop you from making your plays yourself. I find great use in it because use at the right time when you have your setup, your opponent can't get out of this lock because they have no access to their spell cards and you're just repeatedly just summoning your big guys because Dark Missions are a pretty heavy um, beat sick deck. And that's it for the side deck. Do you want me to go over combos? Um, I'll go over like a one, co like a one combo you normally go with, go with. All right, I'll go over the main combo of Dark Magicians. This is one that most people sh um, know, but I don't know if anybody does. It basically works um, the best when you have these three cards. Uh, this in your graveyard. When you have these on the field, and this in your hand, and this in the graveyard. Essentially, what you want to do, get um, during your previous turn, this will be in the graveyard, this will be in your hand. During your previous turn, what you need to do, you activate this, and you are to get um, your magician navigation. 
So we're going to do set navigation. We're going to pretend Roger went in the graveyard. This is, isn't in our hand. This is the only card in our hand. What you can do is, during their turn, activate navigation, special summon the Dark Magician, and then summon the Magician of Dark Magician from your deck. Generally in defense mode because higher defense. What you'll do now is because the effect of a trap card resolved during your opponent's turn, you can now use the effect of Rod and Dark Magic Circle. You choose a chain order, Rod's cost for activating the effect is tributing a spellcaster. So what you would do is you tribute Dark Magician, and because you summon Dark Magician, you can banish a card. You would now banish a coffee point side of the field, it gets banished, this goes to your hand, chain's over. A new chain will now start with navigation with illusion if you switch act like this. Because this is in your graveyard along with your navigation. So now what you do is because this got resolved, you can now use his effect to target the in your graveyard and resummon it. So basically, you're sum you're using navigation and you're just replacing the you used to use in your hand with rod. So in your following turn, you can just summon you can just summon it and it's add any darkness related star card from your hand. As well as on your following turn, this will be in the graveyard now. And you can banish it to negate a spell trap card. The effect of spell trap card. Okay. And that's it. Alright, thanks.